you very much, dear delegates, uh, dear friends. Uh, first of all, I want to add my words of congratulation to Donald uh, on his election as the new president of the EPP. I think he's going to bring his skills, his experience, his wonderful personal manner uh, with him to the EPP, EPP presidency. And I think we're very lucky that he agreed to stand and has agreed to become our president. So thank you very much, Donald. I'd also like to congratulate our Croatian friends and the HDZ on organizing a really excellent Congress. Uh, I'd also to wish, um, to wish Andre and uh, the Croatian government the very best of luck in taking on the presidency of the European Union in 2020. As a small country, I know what an enormous uh, job that is uh, and an enormous burden it is too but it's also a great opportunity for Croatia. And I know that during that six months presidency, you'll be responsible for dealing with some of the most important files uh, in front of the European Union. Most likely the departure of the United Kingdom from the European Union and us beginning talks on a future relationship. And we want that new relationship between the EU and the UK to be as close as possible in terms of trade, security, uh, and also political cooperation. Uh, and also you'll have a really important role to play uh, in negotiating the MFF, uh, the new budget for the European Union. And we all have enormous faith in Croatia and the Croatian government and the HDZ to organize that presidency and run it well. I know you're going to do that. Delegates, as leader of Fine Gael and as Taoiseach, I'm very grateful to all of you, our European family and our European political family for understanding our concerns and taking our hopes into your own hearts when it comes to Brexit. We've been very fortunate in the past two years in having EPP friends and colleagues at the centre of decision making when it came to Brexit. Whether it was John Claude, who's not here with us now, Michel Barnier, Donald Tusk, um, and also Manfred Weber, people who really understood our concerns and helped us to secure an outcome on Brexit that avoids a hard border between North and South in Ireland that hard Brexit that we feared so much. I know you've listened to a lot of speeches today, so I'm going to be very brief and really just make three brief, three brief points. I think as an EPP and as a party, we've learned some lessons from recent events and particularly the way we've handled Brexit successfully. The first is that if we work together, we can tackle the most intractable of problems. We can manage further enlargement of the European Union, which we should support the challenges of migration, the negotiation of a new EU budget, and also the challenges and opportunities of climate change. When we think back about the purpose of Europe, we know that our parents and our grandparents instinctively knew that the European Union was a good idea and a good project because they knew that European unity could end war on our continent. In more recent decades, we've seen how the European Union helped to bring down the Berlin Wall to end communism and spread democracy, free markets, and prosperity to Central and Eastern Europe. And that's been an enormous success of the European Union as well. But we need a new purpose into the future. And I think for younger people, particularly the new generations coming through, they want to know what the purpose of Europe is now. And in my view, the purpose of Europe into the future must be dealing with those global challenges that we can only deal with by working together on a multilateral and multinational basis with climate the first among those. I think we've also seen in the past three years that Europe is also not just a union of nations, but also a union of peoples. And us thinking together and working together and supporting the European way of life in the way that Manfred so ably described it earlier, we can make sure that Europe is truly a powerful force for good in the world. Something we can take forward into future negotiations on other issues, relations with the US, with China, with Russia and our neighbors in the Middle East and Africa. And third, I think we need to be a little bit better at telling the story of the strength of European unity and how it benefits us all and our citizens. It can help us to face down the specter of populism. And we need to be better at presenting and defending what we do, because if we do not, our narrative will be shaped by others. We have to become better at presenting the real news. 30 years ago, when the Berlin Wall came down, the world saw that nobody could set the boundary to freedom or democracy, to say, thus far shalt thou go and no further. And in the next 30 years, 
we need to continue that march. Europe has the potential to be a force for good and greatness in the years ahead, but only if we convince people that we are accountable, that we're stronger together, and that our strength comes from our unity. The European Union, with our EPP driving it forward, succeeded in bringing peace, prosperity, democracy, and the rule of law to our continent. It's created the circumstances for economic growth, prosperity, and equality of opportunity. So let us drive on to the next stage of an ever more united, inclusive, and prosperous European Union. Thank you very much.